The Oakland A's are the worst team in baseball, and we're going to find out if it's possible for them to make the playoffs in MLB The Show. We developed young star players, made some key trades, and completely overhauled this roster with the goal of saving the franchise. Every game matters, and we were fighting in the ninth against Minnesota as we hit a clutch double and tied the game with two outs. We managed to strike out their best player in Byron Buxton to retire the side, and then our young all-star Richard Keenan hit this pitch the other way, which was caught in the outfield, but it allowed 97-speed Jake McCarthy to tag to third base. We could end it in one swing and team MVP Vinny Pasquantino came through with a clutch single to score the game winning run as we walked off an exciting game. We made a splash trade in our franchise trading for Joe Ryan this offseason to help our rotation and it was already paying off as he was playing like a true ace. However, I spoke too soon as he was facing Raphael Devers who took advantage of the fastball he left over the middle and the no doubt two run shot put Boston up. But our offense had been relentless this season and wouldn't give up easily. Keenan drove a 2-0 pitch back up the middle to put runners on first and second. Then it was up to Vinny P to get runs on the board, but he made weak contact and popped up to end the inning. Thankfully, Joe Ryan returned to dominance in the second inning, which gave our offense another chance that Tyler Soderstrom capitalized on as he answered with a deep shot to right center. And it's our mashing rookie catcher who put us on the board and kept us in this game. Boston scored another run, but we once again cut their lead as Ramona Rias ripped a low fastball into the seats. We traded for him at the deadline in season one, and he's been great. Joe Ryan was still on the mound in the fifth, and came through with a scoreless inning. We desperately needed more offense in the bottom of the fifth, and Jake McCarthy hit a curveball down the right field line, but it hooked foul. That was a missed opportunity, as Vinny Pasquantino would have sent him home on this absolute bullet past the first baseman. But instead, Tyler Soderstrom was at the plate and made weak contact to leave Pasquantino stranded at first. Soderstrom was back up as we were down to our last out, and he made great contact into the left center gap, being chased and caught as we lost a frustrating game. The Oakland A's somehow led the AL West at the All-Star break, but it was a very tight race. We needed to add another bat to our lineup to keep mashing baseballs and found Rodolfo Castro to help us beat left-handed pitchers. We were facing the D-backs and our former ace Shintaro Fujinami. We were down 1-0 in the second and Tyler Soderstrom continued to be one of the best prospects in MLB The Show, driving a double into right. Fujinami was a part of the trade for Jake McCarthy and he continues to show us why we won that trade, launching an absolute moonshot off the wall to score a run and using his speed to turn this into an RBI triple. However, Joe Ryan had a another rough start and Fujinami was lights out. We made good contact but struggled to get on base as our bats went cold again. We desperately needed offense in this game and while Pasquantino continued another all-star season with this RBI double, his former teammate beat us 5-2. The Seattle Mariners were dead last in our division but Logan Gilbert was giving us a rough time. He shut us out through five innings until Ahmed Rosario watched this no doubt home run leave the yard. We signed him in free agency last offseason and he's been fun to watch. Despite this moonshot, Julio Rodriguez Rodriguez and the Mariners bullied our pitching for eight runs and we were in danger of losing the division lead. We were struggling to beat bad baseball teams and were down two runs and extras against Washington. Thankfully, Soderstrom was raking and drove in a run. And then out of nowhere, Washington's bullpen completely collapsed, allowing two walks in a row to load the bases. Another walk would tie the game, but Brendan Donovan wanted to be a hero. Watching this one go, a walk-off grand slam for Oakland. It's the play of the year and the exact spark our offense needed. I turned Oakland into the best team in the AL West after being the worst team in baseball, but every game matters if we want to make the playoffs as we struck out the side to start the game versus the Astros, but struggled until the fifth inning when Tavares put two on with a single. Down one nothing. this was the first time all game long we were in scoring position, but ruined the opportunity by hitting into a double play. Nestor Cortez shut us out through six innings and Jordan Alvarez extended their lead. Richard Keenan wanted to get something going in the seventh, launching this one into deep left center, but the center fielder went parallel to the ground robbing us of a hit and that's the dagger. We continued to lose AL West games and Joe Ryan was off to a bad start against Texas as Corey Seager's two-run home run gave the Rangers an early lead. Jacob deGrom was on the mound and we finally got on base in the fourth inning. Then on the very next at-bat, Richard Keenan showed off his opposite field power with a game-tying answer to Corey Seager's two-run shot. We stayed tied for three more innings but Marcus Semien finally broke the silence in the seventh with another home run. We were in the eighth inning and we were running out of time to tie it but Seager couldn't feel the grounder cleanly and Keenan beat out the throw to first. Vinny P was up to the plate and he wanted to send everyone home, launching a three-run blast for the fourth home run of the game. There's more nukes in production than a Cold War. The power was on display, but we didn't stop there as Paven Smith blasted a triple into right field to score another run and we finally won a division game. The Oakland A's were one of the hottest teams in baseball and were on their way to their first playoff appearance in five seasons. We absolutely cruised through August to extend our division lead by five games, but we were 
extra innings against the Tigers and wanted to keep our win streak alive. With runners at the corners and zero outs, Tyler Soderstrom hit the ball as far as he could to score a runner at third on the sack fly as we walked it off and kept finding great ways to win. Our offense had been completely overhauled with impact bats and it's showing in the win column as we held on to a five and a half game division lead entering September. Every division game was crucial at this point in the season and as we were facing the Mariners, Vinny P continued to hit above 320 with this double. He would score and Tyler Soderstrom was up in the fifth inning looking to continue his hot streak with a deep drive to right field and the solo shot leaves the yard. His breakout continues and he's brought pure power to this lineup. We were up two to nothing in the bottom of the sixth and Jake McCarthy wanted to help extend our lead with a double to the gap. Then one of our clutchest hitters, Ramon Arias, slapped an RBI single and we led three nothing. Seattle had runners at the corners in the seventh and it felt like this ball rolled forever before clearing the infield for an RBI single. Manning was in trouble with the bases loaded and Tim Anderson up to bat, but thankfully he got out of the jam with a strikeout. We were only up one run and needed to extend our lead and Jake McCarthy continued his great day, smashing a double deep into right field and off the wall. One run scored and we could have scored more this inning, but Brendan Donovan thought he was way faster than he was and got thrown out at home plate. Thankfully for us, offseason acquisition Kenley Jansen struck out the heart of Seattle's lineup and we were feeling good as Seattle's bullpen was struggling and Vinny Pasquantino continued to mash extra base hits with this eighth inning double. Then with two on, Ramon Arias continued to be clutch, driving in two runs and extending our lead. We were feeling very good with a four-run cushion for all-star closer Zach Jackson, but then he gave up a three-run homer. It was now a one-run game and Jackson struck out Julio Rodriguez to leave one out to go, but on the very next at-bat, Colton Wong completed the comeback with a game-tying RBI single. I couldn't believe we were in extra innings and neither could our bullpen as they completely collapsed. This felt like the longest 10th inning ever as Seattle kept driving in runs with shallow singles and we could not recover from blowing a four-run ninth inning lead as Seattle completely embarrassed us with seven runs in two frames. To make matters worse, the Angels were now only two games back in the division and were our last opponent of the season. The Angels are the only team standing in the way of the A's winning the AL West and we were battling in the bottom of the 10th. We were up three to two and Rosario extended our lead with a full count walk and even Zach Geloff got in on the action, slapping an RBI single between first and second. Our collapse against Seattle must have really frustrated us and we were taking it out on the Angels, winning the first game of the series 7-4. We could win the AL West with just one more victory, but the Angels caught us in a huge slump and we lost three in a row as they came back to win the division on a tiebreaker. We completely fell apart at the end of the year and were forced into a wild card game against Cy Young winner Dylan Cease. The A's were in the playoffs for the first time since 2020, but they had to get through one of the best pitchers in all of baseball. Joe Ryan had a good year, but we needed him to be elite today if we wanted a win. We were scoreless in the fourth inning and Brendan Donovan gave us a much needed base runner with a single up the middle. Then miraculously, we managed to get two guys on as McCarthy also singled. Ramon Arias was up with runners at the corners and his opposite field single got us on the board. We were starting to break through Dylan Cease and Paven Smith launched a high fly ball deep into center field, watching it go straight in the glove of the center fielder. Oakland missed a huge scoring opportunity, but Joe Ryan was pitching an absolute gem and gave our offense the help it needed. Chicago pulled Cease after six and now we could really start raking. Tyler Soderstrom smashed a regularly scheduled double. Paven Smith flew out at the warning track last time but he had the chance to be a hero dropping a single that allowed Soderstrom to score from second. Oakland beat Dylan Cease and took game one. However, Chicago made this interesting evening the series in game number two. Game three would decide Oakland's fate but Matt Manning fell apart in the third inning allowing three runs and it's the White Sox who end the A's season as we miss the ALDS. It's very disappointing, but it's also very good progress and we're gearing up to win it all next season.